Welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the first video in IB Physics Topic 2, Mechanics, where we will be looking at the concepts of motion, Suvat equations and aerial motion. One of physics's most fundamental concepts is motion, defined as the movement of objects. An object's movement can be described via several units. Distance, denoted as d, it is defined as the quantity of space travelled, and is measured in metres. Displacement, denoted as S, it is defined as the quantity of space travelled from a starting position and is also measured in metres. Speed, denoted as final speed V or initial speed U, it is defined as the distance travelled per unit time and it is measured in metres per second. It is expressed using the equation V equals D divided by T or u equals d divided by t. Velocity, denoted as final velocity v, or initial velocity u, it is defined as the displacement travelled per unit time, and is also measured in metres per second. It is expressed using the equation v equals s divided by t, or u equals s divided by t. Acceleration, denoted as a. It is defined as the velocity per unit time or displacement travelled per unit time squared and is measured in metres per second squared. It can be expressed using the equation A equals V divided by T or A equals U divided by T or A equals S divided by T squared. Note that velocity and acceleration are derived from displacement and thus must be direction dependent. For each of these units, they can come in two forms. Instantaneous, calculated at a particular point in time, and average, averaged over the total time of travel. The formula for this is average equals final minus initial divided by two. A typical trick question that comes up on an exam is a car travels around a circular track at a constant speed of 15 meters per second. Which of the following properties does it have? Since the car is driving around a circular track, its direction is continually changing. Thus, despite its speed staying constant, its acceleration, velocity and displacement are all continually changing. The answer is therefore B. Changing displacement, changing velocity, changing acceleration. But how do you calculate motion in more advanced problems? Well, the IB expects you to remember five equations of motion, called the Suvat equations. The Suvat equations are final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time, displacement equals a half times initial velocity plus final velocity multiplied by time, final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times displacement, displacement equals initial velocity times time plus a half times acceleration times time squared, and displacement equals final velocity times time minus a half times acceleration times time squared. Let's take a look at an example question. A stationary car accelerates at 5 meters per second squared for 8 seconds. A. How far has it travelled at that point? B. What is its velocity at that point? We know that the initial velocity is 0 meters per second. The acceleration is 5 meters per second squared and the time is 8 seconds. So for A, the relevant equation is displacement equals initial velocity times time plus a half times acceleration times time squared. After substituting the known values, the displacement is 160 metres. For B, the relevant equation is final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. After substituting the known values, the velocity is 40 metres per second. In addition, the IB expects you to be able to interpret, sketch, and draw motion graphs produced using the Suvat equations. Let's look at these now. Displacement time graphs represent displacement over time. In this graph, the slope of the line at any point equals the velocity during that point. Velocity time graphs represent velocity over time. In this graph, the slope of the line at any point equals the acceleration during that point. To find the change in displacement, calculate the area under the line. Acceleration time graphs represent acceleration over time. 
To find the change in velocity, calculate the area under the line. In these, positive displacement, velocity and acceleration are typically used for objects going forward or upward, whereas negative displacement, velocity and acceleration are typically used for objects going backwards or downwards. Flat, sloped or curved lines in each of these graphs have different meanings, so let's explore these. For a displacement time graph, a flat line indicates constant displacement, zero velocity and no acceleration. An example would be a stationary car. A sloped line indicates constant velocity and no acceleration. If it slopes upwards, velocity is positive. If it slopes downwards, velocity is negative. Examples would include a car moving forwards and moving backwards respectively. A curved line indicates changing velocity and constant acceleration. If it curves up at a decreasing rate, velocity is decreasing and positive, and acceleration would be negative. If it curves down at an increasing rate, velocity is decreasing and negative, and acceleration is negative. At the plateau of both curves, velocity is zero. Examples include a ball thrown up in the air and falling back down, respectively. If it curves downwards at a decreasing rate, velocity is increasing and negative, and acceleration is positive. If it curves up at an increasing rate, velocity is increasing and positive, and acceleration is positive. Again, at the plateau of both curves, velocity is zero. Examples would include a yo-yo throwing downwards and coming back up, respectively. In a velocity time graph, a flat line indicates constant velocity and no acceleration. If it is zero, displacement is constant. If it is positive, displacement is increasing. If it is negative, displacement is decreasing. Examples would include a stationary car, a car moving forwards and a car moving backwards respectively. A slope line indicates constant acceleration. If it slopes upwards, acceleration is positive. At zero, displacement is at a minimum. If it slopes downwards, acceleration is negative. At zero, displacement is at a maximum. Examples include a yo-yo being thrown and a ball being thrown, respectively. You do not need to know curved lines for the velocity time graphs. In an acceleration time graph, a flat line indicates constant acceleration. If it is zero, velocity is constant. If it is positive, velocity is increasing. If it is negative, velocity is decreasing. Examples would include a stationary or moving car, a thrown yo-yo, and a thrown ball, respectively. You do not need to know sloped or curved lines for acceleration time graphs either. The IB expects you to be able to apply this knowledge on your exams in creative scenarios, including three common applications involving aerial motion. When an object moves through a fluid, such as water or air, the fluid resists the object's motion in the form of fluid friction. The counterforce the object experiences due to this is termed the drag force. The magnitude of the drag force is dependent on the fluid's viscosity and the object's velocity, size and shape. Air resistance is the fluid friction due to air. In motion experiments, dense spherical objects are used to minimise air resistance. The three aerial motion scenarios you could be asked about in your IB exam are free fall, normal fall and projectile motion. During free fall, air resistance is assumed to be absent. Thus, the object experiences an acceleration constant at minus 9.8 meters per second squared throughout its fall. As a result, velocity decreases and displacement curves down at an increasing rate. In any question or experiment, Objects are assumed to be in free fall unless specified otherwise. During normal fall, the object experiences acceleration due to gravity. However, as air resistance increases, drag force increases until it matches the object's weight. Thus, acceleration is initially 9.8 meters per second squared and then tends to zero. At this point, terminal velocity is reached. Velocity curves down at a decreasing rate and flattens out to terminal velocity. Displacement curves down at an increasing rate and becomes negatively sloped at terminal velocity. During projectile motion, 
the object is launched into the air, often meaning that it has motion in the x and y directions. Let's look at these now. In the x direction, there is no gravity, so acceleration is zero. Thus, the initial x velocity remains constant, and displacement increases until the object hits the ground. In the y direction, gravity is constant at minus 9.8 meters per second squared. If the object is launched upward, y velocity is initially positive, but decreases. Displacement curves up at a decreasing rate, and then down at an increasing rate. At maximum height, velocity would be zero. Lastly, when an object is launched with an initial velocity u at a launch angle theta and gravitational acceleration g equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, the IB expects u to be able to calculate the initial x velocity, the initial y velocity, the maximum height, the time airborne, and the range. There are several equations not in your formula booklet that you can memorize to make this process much easier. The initial x velocity equals initial velocity times cosine theta, and the initial y velocity equals initial velocity times sine theta. Maximum height equals initial velocity squared times sine squared 2 theta divided by 2 times gravity, or maximum height equals initial velocity times time times sine of theta minus a half times gravity times time squared. Time equals 2 times initial velocity times sine of theta divided by gravity, and range equals initial velocity times time times cosine of theta, or range equals initial velocity squared times sine of theta divided by gravity. Let's look at an example question. A cannonball is shot into the air with an initial speed of 15 meters per second at 30 degrees from the ground. A, how far does a cannonball travel? B, at what height is the cannonball's velocity zero? C, at what time does this occur? For A, range equals initial velocity squared times sine of theta divided by gravity, giving a range of 11 meters. For B, the cannonball's velocity is zero at maximum height, so maximum height equals initial velocity squared times sine squared two theta divided by two times gravity, giving a maximum height of 5.7 meters. For C, the maximum height is reached at half of the airborne time, so time equals a half times two times initial velocity times sine of theta divided by gravity, giving a time of 0.77 seconds. You have now covered all of the content you need for the concepts of motion, CVAT equations and aerial motion to get full marks in the exam. We hope you enjoyed the first video in our IB Physics Topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.